So uh, in the last year or so, we made a decision to split them out so that meshes are meshes, animation is animation, they're loaded into the game engine, it's completely separate assets, but you just say, play this animation on that character or that character or whatever you want. And that way, it can keep the asset size down a bit, um, allows you to reuse animation a lot easier, um, way better for streaming, so you say on this level I only want those couple of animations rather than the whole sweep of animation that the character has. So it um, really sped things up a lot. Um, we've also got our own um, preview of all our uh, stuff, so it goes straight from layout into the preview so we can see in this viewer what it will look like in our PC renderer. And we found that um, that helps a lot because what you see in Maya isn't always 100% what you'll get in game. Sometimes little things go wrong, an animation system might optimise out certain keys and that sort of thing. So you want to be able to test it in your game tech as quick as you can. And uh, we can set up the PC renderer to kind of simulate what you'll get on the wheel of PS2 or obviously 360 pretty easily. So we can test a lot of it out on there so you don't need to have a dev kit of every variety on everyone's desk. They can test a lot of their art on their machine uh, without going for their kits. But we do encourage all the artists and designers to go to their kits as much as they can. Uh, but obviously it's, it's faster if they can just do a quick test on their own machine. And yeah, it's all integrated again with Alien Brain. So if someone wants to export an asset, they just hit go and it'll automatically check it out uh, right to Alien Brain, uh, which just speeds everyone's day up here. If I, if I see a few clicks that people do that they do a couple hundred times a day, I try and get rid of them. Um, Mouse clicks seem quick, but you want to save as much as you can. Yeah, as I sort of said, all of our geometry is built in Maya. Uh, I'm just going to run through a few of the tools we've developed in house to speed up getting some geometry made in Maya. Um, a lot of it, our engine is not like an Unreal Ed or um, or Quake BSP. It's just what we just call Polygon Soup. So this is ways of making quick and uh, not quick and dirty, but quick and quality. Uh, polygon soup geometry to get into our renderer. Uh, so the first one I've got a little road tool I've developed. Uh, and it's just a way of quickly cutting roads through terrain and trying to blend all your textures. Let's go across to uh, You can see here it's just a small piece of terrain. Um, this is the spline we want to use to cut a road through it. And there's a profile, that's the, the shape of the road we want to carve through. Um, so the tool uses that profile to just carve through the geometry and, and then sets up all the relevant materials. Um, so it's pretty quick. This is something that's currently 100% MEL script. Uh, it's something that I do want to get into a plugin as soon as I can when time permits. Uh, but as you can see, it just runs a curve through lofts, uh, splines along the curve, cuts it through the terrain, um, assigns all the textures, corrects all the UVs, um, and then it'll just go through an another tile of terrain, does exactly the same thing, and just joins them all up. And then the last step is it'll do sort of an automatic blending of all the materials based on the normals of the terrain. So you can just get your nice grass on the top and rock on the sides. And that's what it's doing at the moment. There we go. So you can see within a minute or so, your, your LD can get a nice little piece of terrain in. And if this isn't a plug-in, I can get it going within seconds rather than maybe a minute. And you can see um, Pretty quickly, you've got really nice blended sides to all your roads, trying to avoid texture seams. And uh, it's quick, but you can get it in the game. We could get that running on a console in another couple of minutes. And very, very quickly, you can have a nice track through our environment for a racing game, like a time shooter or whatever you want. Uh, that's just an example of tools you can make to, to get art out quickly. And another part of this suite is um, creating LOD quickly. Like often we we'll want to have a 
higher level of Logic 360 and then Wii PS2, you might just drop down a lot of level and then use your really lowest lights as your main geometry in the DS, something like that. Um, so just using Maya's Poly Reduce with a few custom tweaks, um, just grab a piece of terrain and save a lot of it. I never automatically to see. Do a version that's about half and then another version that's about half again. Um, I'll just show that hard. So you can see there that mesh is around 6,000. Uh, not many people know, but Maya's got uh, inbuilt LOD groups, this level of detail group. And it's a group that will automatically switch between different meshes based on how far it is from the camera. So on the mesh itself, uh, on the LOD group, you've got these threshold levels where it will just show the first the highest poly mesh up to, in this case, 100 meters, and then switch at 300 and 1,000. Um, so I've just made use of those, and we actually export those numbers straight into our renderer. You can see there are 6,000, 1,900, and then 900. And you'll see, um, although this road piece isn't LODed, um, you don't get any cracks at all between it because I only log the internal faces, I don't log the boundary verts at all, so you never get cracks between geometry. So that way you can log smoothly, you don't get dirty big cracks in your meshes. And uh, you can run it a lot more safely knowing you're not going to break things and, and cause rendering graphics problems. Um, and painting texture blends. I know Unreal and various tools you can just grab a texture and paint, but it's not possible in Maya out of the box, um, which I find a real pain. Because all the time you just want to blend between rock and dirt and grass and that sort of thing. Um, just like on this scene, which is blending using Vertex Alpha between grass and rock. By the way, if anyone's got questions at any time, just stick up your hand. I'm happy to take questions on the fly. It's all good. I'll just play a different scene for the little painting example. Um, So this is a piece of that terrain. I just had to change the material so it wouldn't have any technical difficulties today. Hey, technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah, cha-ching, indeed. Had to happen. All right. I just jinxed myself, sorry. So, nice day, isn't it? <laughs> As you can see, we're still using Mayor 8.5. Um, we could upgrade to 2009 or 10, but it still does what we want to do most of the time. So save the cash and don't upgrade. Often, if there's a, a little feature that we need, we can just write a tool to, to make it do what we want. Now, hopefully, this doesn't explode again. If it does, I have got videos of everything I can just show. Alright, so here's my research. This um, tool up here, that's just the, the UI for all of our suite of miscellaneous tools. Um, material, shaders. So this little GUI just shows all the materials you've got currently in the scene. If you drag and drop new materials in, you can just reload the GUI and it'll just show all the new materials. And say, I've got them here, I've just got grass and, and dirt. And say I want to stick some rock on there. You can set your brush radius and whatnot. You can just start painting and it'll automatically go and create the shaders that do the blending and set up uh, the HLSL FX shaders and then figure out whether it needs to paint the alpha to trans transparent or opaque. And or you can just blend in between using the opacity slider so you can just paint the rock or the roads or the dirt or whatever. And I haven't seen anything for Maya to do this at all. Uh, it might be in 9 and 10, but not in the, the uh, what's new features I've looked at. Um, so this is really nice, and we use Vertex Alpha even for 360 because the Wii, you can do these effects on the Wii, but you can't get access to your Vertex Normals in the shaders on the Wii, but you can actually access the Vertex Alpha. So we use the Vertex Colors as much as we can to do blending and that sort of thing. Whereas if we were doing a purely 360 or PC tile, you can just use shaders and generate, uh, use the Normals to generate the blending on the fly, and it'd be a lot uh, easier. Uh, but then you don't have the control of it's painting texture. So you can see that's just painting in different textures, the sand, hopefully words. So how difficult is it to create this this <coughs> How long did it take you to make this? Um I have the, the basics running in probably a day. 
but it was an 